Yo, what is up guys? My name is DJ Rick Webb, if you guys didn't already know, and this is going to be my review on the JBL SRX 815Ps and the JBL BRX 918SPs that I've now owned for over two years. Like I said briefly there in the intro, I've owned these things now for over two years and this has been my go-to rig, go-to subs, go-to tops for pretty much all of my events for the last two years. And this video is by far super overdue. I did complete unboxings and first impressions on both of these products. You guys can go check those videos out. Those videos are pretty popular. That is... But I want to talk about my actual personal review on these speakers right here. Just quickly, a little overview for you guys. This is a 1500 watt RMS speaker, 2000 watt peak. This is a 1000 watt sub. It, this is a tour line sub. This is a tour line top. JBL SRX 815P, you know, they got DSP functions, all that. If you guys want to know more about the actual speakers themselves, go watch my initial unboxing and first impressions of these to understand the actual sheer power and capabilities of these speakers. I personally don't know how many events I've used these at. I've used them at countless events so far. I own two of the tops, I own two of the subs, and in this video I'm going to break it into three different phases for you guys. Timestamps for those different phases are right here in order. First off, I'm going to talk about why I bought these, why I bought these specific speakers uh, for my applications. The second part, I'm going to pretty much tell you my review and tell you if these lived up to my expectations for the applications I wanted to use them for and just literally my review, my personal review, honest review on having these things for two plus years now. And in the last section, I'm gonna be talking about who else these are good for. So basically what I'm gonna be explaining is based on my expectations, my applications, who else these are suited for. So first off, let's talk about why I bought these speakers. What application was I trying to solve? And this is a good point for anyone looking to buy speakers. You need to really write down what your application is that you're trying to solve so that you can buy the right speaker to solve that application. I, at the time, owned two JBL PRX 712s, those are back there still, and I also owned two JBL Eon 615s. I owned two JBL PRX 18s and two JBL 15 inch subs. So I had four tops, four subs, and I was trying to condense down my setup. So let's talk about application and to basically talk about application, let's talk about what I was using and what I was trying to condense it down to. So that was the main goal was to condense it down. Because at the time, all I had was a GMC Sierra truck where all of my equipment needed to either fit into the tailgate or fit into the back extended cab portion of the truck. I did not own a trailer until recently this past year, so that's why some of this might change when I talk about my review portion of it. But as you guys know, I do a variety of events. I do small weddings, I do a lot of weddings that are like 100, 150, maybe max 200 people, but I also do a lot of school dance events where we're doing 300, 400, 500 students at a school dance. So that is a very, very large distance between like wanting to do a very small intimate event and a very big event and having a sound unit and application that could do both. Some would argue that is not possible to have that creative and that was the application I was trying to solve. I wanted to buy two tops that could handle the small weddings by themselves. Have enough bass, make it sound like maybe there's a 15 inch or two 15 inch subs there, have some good bass for a wedding with just two tops and then I wanted to be able to take those same tops, put them on a high pass filter, and they would have enough, uh, enough power, enough sure power to produce some loud volumes to be paired with subs. So we would take all the loads out of the top so that they could produce all of the high end. It'd be super loud with the high end. And then we would pair them with subs that could handle the bass portion. And I wanted two subs that could handle and produce enough output to do about 300, 350 people, which was the typical homecoming prom that I was doing at the time. So that was the application and what I decided to buy was obviously behind me. My two SRX 815Ps were the ones that were gonna be those tops that I could use at weddings and also use at big school events paired with subs and the subs down here are the JBL VRX 918SPs. Let's talk a little bit now in the second portion right now of the did these meet my expectations? Did these tops, subs meet the expectations and the application that I needed them to solve? So let's start off with the top. Everyone wants to know about the tops because the tops are full range and it's something you could buy originally. So let's talk about the JBL 
SRX 815Ps. And I say that with emphasis because these things absolutely met all my expectations and actually blew away some of my expectations. First off, sound. These things, compared to my JBL Purex 712s over there, compared to the Eons, compared to even the famous QSC K12 and K12.2, these things are a night and day difference when it comes to sound quality and output. Go ahead, comment down below all you QSC people about QSC K12s are the best thing ever, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we got that over with. These things are beyond QSC K12s. These are beyond Purexs. The sound is literally night and day difference. If you run them A to B, you will hear a night and day difference between these tops and the Purex top. Let's talk about my main application and that was at small weddings. I wanted to replace the Purex 12 tops with the Purex subs because that was just four speakers I had to bring. These things, if you EQ them, big emphasis right there, you have to EQ them. Barr ran into this issue where he saw that I was using these and also bought them and the first couple times he used them was like, how did Ricky get these to sound so good? EQ, you gotta EQ these speakers. So I added quite a bit of bass on the EQ to make these things have the kick and the punch that I wanted to be able to replace those subs. In doing that, we are also limiting the output because the amp is gonna suck up a lot more power to drive that subwoofer than if it was just driving the, twi the tweeters at say a school dance. So basically I EQ'd it to have a lot of punch, a lot of bass, and this was perfect for indoor weddings. This is perfect for indoor weddings up to 150, 200 people. Outdoor events, I find myself in some of the kind of medium to larger outdoor weddings, I'm talking like the ones that are actually over 100 people, I sometimes struggle with the amount of bass that I'm getting out of these. I do actually increase the bass a little bit more than what I do in an inside event, but even then, because we're in an outdoor event, it's wide open, it's free space, there's no walls that I can couple with the add additional bass basically. It's just an outdoor scenario, so the actual output sometimes is a little bit of a stretch for me and I'm like, I really wish I had a sub in this outdoor scenario. But nine times out of 10 at most of the events I'm doing, these things are fine and they produce plenty of output, plenty of sound, plenty of bass for most of my weddings. Now let's talk about the large events. I'm talking the school dances. And by that I mean I'm putting 100 hertz or 120 or 80, whatever. I use 100 hertz that pairs well with my subs crossover so I'm taking the bass out of these subs and I'm running basically the tweeter at maximum output and that is where these things pack a punch. These things right here at a school dance can easily keep up with four regular 18 inch subwoofers even two dual 18s are actually Hey, they can pretty much keep up with four dual 18 subwoofers, no problem on a high pass filter and be the same output as those subs in terms of bass. All right, so on my review portion right here, I got two last things I wanna to mention to you guys. First thing is these speakers never complain. And what I mean by never complain, they never hit limit. 99% of the time, these things have way more power than I could ever need. Compared to like when I was using my PRXs, I normally was running those close to the limit for weddings and for school dances. Most of the time, they were running with the limit light on. These things, I'm rarely even coming close to running them at limit. In fact, I wanna say maybe like, there was five times max. Those are mostly school dances or those big outdoor festivals where we really don't have enough sound. When I'm saying at limit, they were at limit for a long duration. Sometimes they hit limit on say like Cupid Shuffle and I play it a little bit louder, my mixers gains up a little bit loud. They'll rarely hit limit, but for the most part, they never complain, they're never at limit, and I love having the ability to just know that I always have more volume to push them louder. Second thing here, and this is a negative by far, they're heavy as shit. And I can't stress this enough. This is a 63 pound speaker. Try putting that on a speaker stand. Even with a hydraulic speaker stand, you have to get it up to pretty much your like chest waist level for an average type human being. They're heavy as shit and that is by far one of the biggest drawbacks to these speakers. They're also really big. They're big and they're heavy. And on that note, they are not for everyone because of those two factors. Enough on the tops, let's talk about the big booming subs. Now, 
On the case of the JBL VRX 918 SP subwoofers, these are the powered ones. They do have a passive version, just like the SRXs, they have a passive version. These pretty much met my expectations. They did not blow them away like the SRXs did. So initially, let's talk about initially when I bought these, my expectations, what I needed was I could only fit max two 18-inch subwoofers in my GMC Sierra in the back cab. And I needed those two subwoofers to be one light because I was carrying these up and down stairs to store them. They couldn't take up a lot of space because they had to fit in the back of the truck. And they had to be stupid loud to be able to keep up with two tops so that I never had to bring more than two subs. So on that note, I can stand by the fact that these right now on the market in their like category, they are by far the lightest and the loudest and the smallest footprint subwoofers on the market by far. This sub behind me only weighs 85 pounds and it is competing with subs in its category that they pretty much all weigh over 100 pounds. The EV ETX 18 SP is probably the closest in terms of performance to this subwoofer right here and it weighs like 115 pounds. This is 85 pounds and it can hang and actually personally I think it out does the EV ETX 18 sub. Now, I say all that, it's the lightest, it's the most compact, and it's probably one of the loudest, if not the loudest in its categories, but it is by far not the cheapest in its category at all. Some of you might ask why I did not get the SRX 18 sub, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, the SRX 18 sub is not louder than this. This is actually, the VRX sub is louder than the SRX 18 sub, and actually, I did a head-to-head -head between the SRX, the PRX, and the VRX, and I'm going to be honest, the PRX and the SRX were pretty much even. Number two, the SRX cabinet is huge. Like, it, it's huge. Like, I, can, I would not be able to fit two of the SRX 18 cabinets in the back of my truck. They're just way too big. At the time, like I was saying, these met all my expectations, and if you were talking back before I had a trailer, I would say absolutely these are meeting my expectations 100 percent a little bit over a year ago you guys know i bought a new truck and i bought a trailer which now opens up the opportunity to buy 18 inch dual subwoofers obviously a dual 18 will blow away one of these single 18s and actually you can pretty much pick up the srx dual 18 for the same price as one of these subwoofers and one of the dual 18s obviously will outdo one of these single vrx subs so my current dilemma right now is for most of my school dance is say 250 max these two subs work perfectly fine but when I do the school dances like you've seen this year guys I've done a 450 and a almost 850 900 student school dances two of these just isn't gonna cut it and buying two more of these to make four is just really really pricey especially for the amount of output you're gonna get so currently the better option right now for me is to buy dual 18s which are gonna have higher SPL higher output and cost less because Right now, weight, size, those aren't a factor for me anymore because I have a trailer, I can transport all these, it's not as big of a factor anymore. But what these were when I bought them was perfect. So yeah, in saying that, that's not for everyone. I mean, not everyone's doing the size school dances I'm doing, or if you are, it's very rare. So just the overview real quick, these are no slouch. They will destroy a PRX-18. They will destroy an SRX-18. They will destroy a QSC KW-181. Trust me, I've, I've done these side by side. They will. Which it should. The price tag for this sub is well above all those subs I just mentioned. So yeah, it's loud. It doesn't weigh much. It's a small compact form factor, but it's pretty pricey. So let's wrap it up here with part three, and that is who should be buying these speakers based on my experience with them. Let's start with my favorites, the tops. And these are for the people that want to achieve the best of both worlds. You want to be able to go out and do a wedding with some really good sound output, some loud bass, and you don't have to bring a sub, and you can do 100, 150 people, no problem with these. But then you could also take these subs, put them on a high pass filter, go out to a prom, homecoming, and blare them paired with some subs and have a really, really loud system to do basically up to 400 people, 500 people if you want to push. But that does come with a price and I'm not just talking about the speaker cost, they are pretty pricey speakers, but they're heavy. They're 63 pounds, they're heavy, they're not easy to handle, they do have handles all around them, but they're a heavy speaker and they're not small. They do take up quite a bit of room in your vehicle. So. That's two things you gotta consider. And on that note, if all you're doing is weddings of 100, 150 people, 
I personally would not recommend buying this speaker for your weddings. I would be looking into something maybe a little more compact such as like the EB Evolve 50s. The real bang for your buck comes into play when you do a lot of variety of events small and large that's where these really come in to fit that application that's where these are really solid side note if you also do like a lot of weddings like bar does where you guys are just going absolutely insane balls to the walls which most like 90 percent of djs in america are not doing that at weddings so if you want to be like bar you could also buy them if all you do is weddings these are really not the best option for you you should look for something maybe a little bit more compact and a little bit more portable that doesn't weigh as much so who should be looking at buying these subs? One, these subs are perfect if you need a lot of bass. I'm saying like you need more than that. Like you love bass. Your bar, you love bass. You want to bring a dual 18 sub for all your events, but you don't have a trailer. You just have a normal car, a normal vehicle. These are perfect for you because they're compact, they're light, and they pack a punch. Downside is they do cost quite a bit of money. And on that note, they're not perfect for everyone. So I do want to give you guys my best bang for your buck, like subs you should be looking at buying and stuff that I kind of want to buy. If you're looking for a single 18, personally the JBL PRX 818XLF is by far the best sub in its category right now. It's equal to the output of the single SRX 18 and it does not cost that price. It's a very affordable sub in its category. It, personally me, it beats out the QC, it beats out the EV in its category. If you have a trailer and you're looking at buying some dual 18s, you cannot beat the bang for your buck right now on the SRX 218, the dual 18 SRX, the same on that Barbot. That is by far the best bang for your buck if you're looking for loud output and you don't care about the size and transporting it, you have a trailer that by far is the best bang for your buck. So yeah guys, that was my quick well overdue uh, video explaining basically why I bought these speakers, how I've been using them over the last two years, and basically if they are worth it for me and if they're worth it for you guys. So if you guys enjoy this video, if you like the content, be sure to slap a like on this video. The likes very, very, very much help this channel. Leave a comment down below what you guys think of these speakers. What speakers are you using? What applications are you solving? So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button. And I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. Like always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning. If you want to check out the t-shirt merch, it's linked in the description down below. Keep them records spinning, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.